We begin tonight with the discovery of the body of the missing army general Idris al Khali after a search lasting almost two months. An army search party recovered the remains of retired Major General al Khali in an abandoned well in Guchwet community of Shen in just south local government area of Plata State. The leader of the search and rescue operation seeking to uncover the circumstances surrounding the officer's disappearance, Brigadier General Umar Muhammad, said a parade will be held in honor of the general. The late Major General Idris Al-Khali was declared missing since September the 3rd, 2018, while on his way from Abuja to Bochi and route Joss, the Plateau State capital. Okay. We have declared some people wanted, and based on that, some of them have reported to the police, and some people who took part in the relocation brought us to where he was relocated. And based on that, he was actually relocated into an abandoned well, which is behind me here. We came here this morning, we drained the water, and we are being able to salvage um, the body, the remains of General Kali. Okay? Um, and I can tell you that this means the first two aspects are completed. What is now left is for all those who took part in this heinous act. Let me tell you that nobody, no matter how connected a person is, whoever is involved in this heinous act will not go unpunished. A disturbing discovery it is indeed. The recent clashes between members of the Islamic movement of Nigeria, Shite and security personnel in Abuja came up for discussion. At Wednesday's Federal Executive Council meeting presided by President Muhammad Buhari, Minister of Information and Culture gave this indication while briefing State House correspondence at the end of the deliberations. The Council also approved a policy on leather and leather products, a sector government hopes will create employment and generate revenue. This matter came up for discussion, and I think the Honorable Minister of the Federal Capital Territory is um, been asked to uh, take the matter up with his own uh, security committee. By this uh, policy, uh, we will now harness our leather resources uh, in a manner that uh, instead of uh, exporting uh, raw uh, leather uh, or semi-finished uh, leather, uh, we will now be in the position we want to prepare uh, our nation so that we'll be in the position to uh, f finish our leather in terms of processing it into finished uh, leather and then use uh, that uh, leather in the production of uh, uh, finished leather uh, products. And um, this uh, has application in almost virtually every aspect of our lives. In the meantime, calm has returned to the federal capital, Abuja, after three days of violence between Shiite protesters and security operatives. Shiites from all over the country had gathered in Abuja to observe their annual Arabian religious trek and protests the continued detention of their leader, Sheikh Ibrahim al zagzaki 20 followers of the sect were allegedly shot by security forces in Zuba, Nyanya and Kugbo area of Abuja, while 400 were arrested. Our correspondent, Kela Megwa, has a situation report. Arabain or the 40th day of the martyrdom, sees Shiite pilgrims make their journey to Karbala on foot. But the third Imam of Shia Islam, Hussein ibn Ali and his companions, were killed by the army of Yazid I. The Arba'in pilgrimage is the world's largest public gathering, and that was what the Shiites in Nigeria were observing in the nation's capital. However, used the opportunity to demand the release of their leader, Sheikh Ibrahim El Zagzaki, who has been in custody since 2015, despite a court order directing his release.
this protest led to three days of violence between the protesters and security agencies. Calm has returned to the federal capital, but residents of the Wusetu area of the city tell us their experience. We don't know what happened. We were sitting down there, we saw some people, they are shooting bullets, tear gas everywhere. When we were inside, we just sitting around this corner. They were just Tony police, police was just shooting their tear gas. Everybody was scared. This is the exact spot where the police vehicle was set ablaze in the scuffle between Shiites and security forces just yesterday. This scuffle between the security forces and the Shiite protesters has been going on for a very long time with no actual end in sight. Could the activities of yesterday have been avoided? Maybe. Is it possible that the police or the security forces are using excessive force in trying to quell this situation? Maybe. But one thing is certain. Come the elections in 2019, Nigerians need to know that they would have a safe environment to go out and cast their votes. And the general business of living every day would require a place to be secure and violence-free. Kayla Magua, Channels Television News. Now to politics, the national chairman of the All Progressives Congress, Comrade Adam Sushomale, says that he cannot compromise his principles of fairness and equity to satisfy some aggrieved governors whom he describes as his friends. Speaking after a private meeting with the president, Muhammad Buhari, at the State House in Abuja, Comrade Sushomale described as false plans by some governors to remove him as chairman. He insists that he would not mortgage his conscience to keep his job. I remain a friend to these governors. I respect them. I appreciate them. I even appreciate them for the fact that, but for their support, I will not be chairman. And you do not go stepping on toes of those who supported you to get to a position. But however, I thought I was clear and I remain clear that in helping me to get to the position, it was to help APC to return to its core values of progressive politics, of fairness, of justice, of adherence to rule of law, and obedience, total submission to the extra provisions of our party constitution. Um, it is only in Nigeria that you can have 10 aspirants competing for one office and one person emerge, and the remaining nine wonder why they didn't win. In other uh, in, in uh, clients, once you file out and there's another person, the more the number, the more the number of losers. How I can have the power to make everybody a winner, that is one trick I'm not yet able to master. <laughs> In the meantime, the national leader of the All Progressives Congress is urging aggrieved members to respect party supremacy and channel all grievances through the party's appeal committee. The APC leader offered this advice after a meeting with the president at the State House. He added that the party is not threatened by any move or meeting by the opposition party, as he believes that Nigeria will not go back to her past. We all have to respect the party's supremacy. You are all here. Where we had the Congress, uh, we elected new executive. The convention, we had it. We had NEC before the end. And we surrender to avoid conflict to avoid domination, to avoid abuses of power. We surrender our right. All rights to the National Working Committee headed by Adam Osio. That the National Working Committee who set up electoral bodies to supervise various state congresses and elections. We signed off on it. So, if it is not in an individual favor, 
So be it. We did. We gave three options. Concessions. Where there is no concessions. Because if you are more than two, more than three, and you cannot agree to one candidate, you go to the next level. The next level, it is the stakeholders delegate. And you can to be supervised by the national, organized by the national working committee of the party. National election committee of the party. That's the party supremacy. Or the freest option, the less uh, combatant, is open direct primary. Lie up. One, two, one, two, three. <laughs> if you win, you win. If you win, go home. <laughs> then appeal committee was set up to listen to all appeal, internal mechanism for conflict resolution. It, it was there. You cannot turn around against that. You cannot turn against all of that. Ahead of the presidential campaigns in November, the People's Democratic Party is directing all support groups for the party's presidential candidate to work closely with the campaign council in order to regulate content. The National Publicity Secretary of the PDP, Mr. Kola Olobodion, says that the party's campaign structure will be centralized for proper coordination. He also maintains that the campaign strategy will be issue-based and streamlined to ensure effectiveness and responsibility. As you are aware, the National Independent, the, the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, has scheduled November 18, 2018, for the commencement of presidential and national assembly campaign activities ahead of the 2019 general elections. In this regard, the PDP wishes to inform Nigerians about the tenor, outlook, and structure of our presidential campaign. Our presidential campaign will therefore be issue-based. We will focus on issues that have direct bearing on the welfare of Nigerians who have suffered enough hardship, pain, and anguish in the last three and a half years. Our campaign in outlook will therefore be strategically centralized and streamlined to ensure effectiveness and responsibility in our message content, dissemination, and general engagement with Nigerians at all levels. In this regard, all support groups for our presidential campaign are directed to ensure that their operations and activities are approved and coordinated under the direct supervision of the party's presidential campaign council. In part two, after the break, traditional rulers from the South-South and the South-East pledged to mobilize their subjects towards a violence-free 2019 general elections in their kingdoms. Please stay with us.